Okay, looking back on Saturday uh, briefly, uh, once again, just proud of our team, the way we handled things, uh, played a uh, relatively clean, played hard. Um, once again, I have to acknowledge the fans. It was incredible. What a great atmosphere to hang around and wait for us for two hours plus and, and then uh, give us a lot of inspiration coming out. I understand the catwalk out here, which we weren't able to do, was completely jammed. And uh, so hopefully we'll get to do that here this week. So I call them to, to show up again. Uh, excited about opening up SEC play here this week. Um, obviously, the competition improves greatly. So um, one thing about that game is I thought we did some really good things, but there are a ton of mistakes. and. So many things we can improve on, and that, that's exciting for us to get back to work. And really, that's our focus, you know, our daily habits. What are we going to do? What are we going to sacrifice to, to improve, um, you know, to get better today, uh, you know, with our short-term goals and, and, uh, and look to improve? Um, you know, once again, uh, you know, South Carolina is the team that we always seem to have good games with uh, through – through my many years here, uh, always a very good game, always evenly matched, and um, you know we're looking forward to that challenge and uh, calling that home crowd to to once again show up like they did last week and make a difference. Uh, we get, greatly appreciate them, and uh, you know, so uh, getting ready here for South Carolina starting today. There's a lot of positive things to point out from the game. Is there any? Teaching moments that you're going to be harping on your team from Saturday night's game. Oh, there, there, most definitely. There, there's, you know, many, many things, you know, from, and, you know, you saw that. I think, you know, you probably watched opening day football and leading up to our game with the ability to watch some games Thursday, Friday, and then, you know, we played so late Saturday. There was some time in between the watch, and we try, and I try to bring up a lot of things to the players to head it off before it happens because it. It, it's just normal. Kids are all amped up and excited about that first game, but you really got to focus on your job, you know, and, and do your primary responsibility first. I think there was a lot of good teaching moments on that being done. And then there's some moments where when you're playing somebody new, you know, you know the reaction time is different. You know, and that's where you have to rely on your rules and, and, and doing your job. And, and at times we were, uh, you know, as a, as a, I'm a DB guy and a defensive guy at heart, you know, you know and I use, the, I use it with the players. I'm like, you know, they're, they're busy watching the game, you know, when they're out there playing. And they can't watch the game when they're out there playing ball. You know, they have to read their keys and do their job and then play football. But there's no room for, for them to view what's going on. Vision, yes, vision's important, but taking care of your job, doing your primary responsibility, reading your keys, all of those things, uh, it starts there. Mark, speaking of football terms, you probably wish that you had a full 60 minutes of reps for your guys to, you know, for film and everything. Are there any challenges to ramp up to such a big game next week? No, and you only had a quarter or three and two and no. a half? No, that part of it, no. We, we ramped up very hard in camp and we're ready to play and our guys were – uh, I, I do think you have to understand in game one, as we talk about last week, I talked about, I talked about in here Monday last week of them controlling their emotions, controlling their breathing, controlling all that. That was a challenge when you tee off two hours plus, you know, after you're supposed to, and then they get out there. And But we did have long drives. We were pushed. I mean, our guys are in good shape. That part of it I'm not worried about. But, uh, but, to the beginning part of your question, yeah, it does bother me that we didn't get a lot of reps for some guys that we could have gotten some reps. You know, that, that uh, there's some players that worked extremely hard that, that we wanted to see in a game-like situation. We, we have a big lead, and, you know, so that part of it, you know, is, is disappointing. I also think, you know, for, for, you know, the offense, you know, getting in rhythm you know, as, as I mentioned, post-game, you know, 16 first downs at, at half, you know, and we had one possession, I think, in the second half, you know, 18 first downs. I mean, you know, I would have loved to have seen us continue to move the ball and, uh, you know, get some yards and, and get some plays in and get, you know, try to continue to build on the rhythm that I thought we found in the second quarter. 
um, you know that. But it is what it is. Mark, you all had a massive field position advantage in that game when you kind of look at the draft chart. Special teams, just what did you see from that, that group when you did Yeah, the special teams were, were, were really solid, you know, really good. Um, you know, we got to continue uh, to improve, continue to build on that. But they were really solid. We knew, um, you know, you know, I, I, we knew that there was probably no chance that they'd kick the ball to Barry on. You know what I mean? So we were very prepared for uh, for some short kicks, and you could see we uh, exploited that with the big return. You know, on the on the opening kickoff return. Um, so Willie had a nice return there. We would work that. We expected some form of a short kick, squib, squib pooch, you know, whatever. But uh, we didn't feel like in, in any way they were going to kick the ball to Barry on. Mark, uh, a few couple of long third downs in that first or I guess the second defensive drop, but you didn't give up any more third down conversions after that. But what happened with the team? Uh, would you, well, just, it, it just goes to, you know, the point I was making earlier, just seeing different plays, you know, vision, just being amped up, you know, and just, you know, you got to play with, with clean vision, clean eyes, and, you know, do your job, and guys are getting a little uh, little antsy, running themselves out of position, you know, but it, it, we just executed better, bottom line, executed better, um, mixed it up, and you know, we got to continue to do that. You know, sometimes, you know, for, for Coach White and for any defense, I mean, it is what it is. You know, you, you know, the, maybe you're going to be in man, maybe you're going to be in five, maybe you're going to bring six, but you got to win some one-on-ones as well. Mark, it looked like as the game moved along, the offensive line was really getting into a good know, yeah. rhythm with the, in the run game in particular. I, I agree. I thought, um, you know, they, the coaches did a nice job of just mixing it up and, and uh, you know, mixing up the run game, hitting them with the perimeter stuff, stretching them out, hitting it downhill. Just just a good mixture. Mark, you all have talked about Jason Patterson since the spring, the one series he got, he looked really good out there. Just what about him made him able to seize that, you know, a spot rotation as a freshman? I think we've seen that since then. <laughs> I think, you know, just the – you know, the opportunity he had in the spring to get a lot of reps, and he made the most of it. You know, he's one of those guys that's, um, you know, he's, he's pretty serious. You know, he's he's locked in on his daily goals, and, and he works hard daily. You know, kind of puts his head down, keeps his mouth shut, and works hard. And uh, he's worried about just getting better. And uh, I don't mean that in any selfish way. You know, he just wants to help the team and, and wants to get better, and I, I love that attitude. What sort of challenges does Lenore Sellers present? Yeah, he's, you know, a a dual threat guy. He's big. He's strong. He can throw the heck out of the ball down the field. Um, You know, you saw that. Uh, So you saw, you see the arm talent. Um, You know, so I think a a very good football player that um, is going to get better with every snap he takes, every game, every rep, you know, he'll improve. And, uh, but very good. You know, physical guy with a lot of, a lot of attributes. You know, he could run, he could throw. Um, you know, he seems like a very mature young man. So, you know, obviously everything you read and see about him takes the game very serious and works very hard at it. Mark, I think against ODU, South Carolina edge rushers were responsible for six tackles for loss and four forced fumbles. Yeah. Yeah, they have a, a really good combination with, you know, five and six. So you can see them both out there. You can't miss them. You know, you may get the numbers confused because they both play, uh, you know, they're uh, one's a, a very mature uh, uh, older player that, that's an impact player in uh, in Kennard. And then, you know, with uh, Dylan Stewart, the, the you know, five-star freshman, big-time player, um, very disruptive. Those guys are uh, – uh, they, they, they're just very good players. You know, they're athletic. Um, they get off on the football. They attack, you know, they, but they also uh, have a nice feel, you know, when they, you know, tried to, you know, bait them upfield and run some draws and things of that nature. They, 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 they read it well and, and uh, retraced well. So they're good, good football players. Mark, much of the game back, I was pretty impressed with Jack Burton. Looked like he had one of his better games there. What did you see from him and just the growth he made this offseason? 
Yeah, he he did he did good. He's he's getting better. He's going to be pushed, you know, by Coach Wolf and and all of us. And uh, you know, again, I think he, he he's growing. There there there's still a player too that that he needs to finish uh, better. And uh, you know, we had a couple opportunities had he finished, you know, cleaner. Uh, but but you know a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys that are that I could say that about that that were striving for improvement and and uh, but he's he's certainly getting better. Mark, uh, as you mentioned, the games with South Carolina have been evenly matched. Last year that loss down there, I would say after the game, one of the more frustrating loss here. Do you bring that up? With the team this year, or is it new team, new year? It's always new team, new year. You, you've you heard me say that, what, a hundred times, you know what I mean? Whether it was dealing with bad streaks, good streaks, you name it, uh, every year is a new year. Um, I think with that being said, you always try to learn, you know what I mean, from, from teams you play, maybe – uh, things that pop up, things that have happened, um, you know, we're always going to try to learn and, uh, you know, grow from mistakes or things that have happened, you know, things of that nature. But what? you mentioned that the games have been closer. Does, does, does this opponent, does it get more juice out of your guys? I think it, it you know, I don't know, it's juice overrated. We need to be prepared. You know, we need to be prepared, you know, and, uh, our guys said uh, after a two-hour, 20-minute delay last week, they had juice, you know, but it's really about going out and executing and playing, you know. So um, I think the fact that it's a conference game this early uh, definitely amps things up a little bit. What did you think your offensive operation as far as getting the tempo you wanted to get? Well, I think you saw that, you know, with plays. You know, we had a, a good number of plays uh, and again, good. And, and again, how many times have you heard me say you're you're going to distribute the football if you get first downs? You know, we want explosive plays. I think we found a nice mixture. We we created some explosives, but we also moved the ball. You know, and the tempo and the operation was better. wasn't wasn't perfect. You know, by any stretch, um, we've got to clean up some things with uh, just you know, formationally and all the different nuances, there is quite a bit that goes on pre-snap with our offense. And uh, Coach, uh, you know, Coach Bush talks about that constantly, you know, that we have to win the pre-snap because there's a lot going on with formations, motions, shifts, and then, then executing because if you can do that effectively, it puts some pressure on some guys. Do you think you had any false starts? I don't think we had any false starts. I did have to burn what two, I think two timeouts, you know, so that, that, and, and, you know, I went into the game saying, hey, I will burn the timeouts. Like, like, you know, I wasn't panicking about that. You know, if, if something wasn't perfect, let's just call timeout, regroup and get them, get them settled in. Because again, there's a lot going on. And, uh, you know, I think it's I, – I, I like where we're headed. We have some more work to do. Brock Vandegrift, obviously, in his first college start. <laughs> a lot of things that could have gone wrong with the delay didn't, obviously, an early turnover. Uh, but his ability to settle in uh, and really make plays with his feet, the vision that he seems to have downfield, what kind of a weapon is that going into the season? Because it seems like it's something we haven't had, you know, in, except for Will, really, when he was here a couple years ago and fully healthy. Yeah, I, I agree. I think he I think he made very good uh, decisions. I thought Brock, as I mentioned post game, I thought he played like I, I thought he would play, and I had a lot of confidence in him going into the game, and and I think he delivered. Does that mean he played perfect or anything like that? No, he he knows. He'll be the first to admit that there's things that we need to improve on. But I thought his pocket awareness was very good. I thought, um, y you know. In practice, that's hard to simulate all of that all the time. But the fact that he could step up, you know, and you know, and and scramble when he had to, scram, you know, buy time to throw the ball, um, throw in rhythm and on time, he did all those things. And um, you know, he's not going to be perfect. No quarterback is with all that decision making. There's a lot that goes on. There's a lot they're reading, and then they have to feel all that pressure. As you just mentioned, I mean, we're certainly going to not be as comfortable this week, 
with South Carolina's defensive front in the way they could, uh, you know, pressure uh, the quarterback. So we got to make sure we have a very good plan for that. And, and um, you know, but, but you know, he played uh, very good. It was good to see. I thought he played like a confident, you know, a confident quarterback. He didn't seem like a first-year starter. Um, so hopefully he can continue to improve on that. Coach, the defense was able to force a couple of turnovers and get some sacks, and this kind of led to some saying that this might be one of the better groups you've had. What about this group is different to maybe some of the better defenses you've had? You know, I don't know. That That's to be determined. I'm not ready to anoint them yet, you know, on any of that. Um, there's things that we need to improve on um, a great deal from this game. And uh, I just want to see us stay in the daily focus um, and handle the things we need to do daily, uh, you know, to help us today, you know, improve on some of the things and the mistakes we've made. And then, you know, this week with our short-term goals of taking care of business here uh, with, with our next game. Mark, I think the fans are really excited about Bush, especially the one series where you took, I think it was three straight three. deep shots. I don't know how many times in your tenure you'd be comfortable with a guy, you know, calling three straight shots, but you seem to be comfortable with Bush, and how is that working out? I, you know, in our staff meeting yesterday, you know, I pointed that out to him too. I told him I loved it. You know, I loved the way he attacked it and, and went at it, you know, and, um, you know, that's, that's not always going to happen or anything like that, but... Uh, you know, you have to mix things up. You know, you have to. Um, you know, we went into it. We understood, you know, their defensive philosophy. They, a year ago, I think they gave up a lot of explosive. They talked about it in the preseason, about keeping things in front. So we went into it with a mindset of hitting some intermediate stuff and, uh, you know, and working those chains, as I mentioned. And then when we had our shots hit them, um, and there was there was a few that that we missed also, you know whether we uh, we checked out a one that we we had a, we had a shot and it was the right coverage for the right shot, but we uh, we missed it and um, you know and so we just continue to work at it. But I've noticed that with Coach, you know, all the way from 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 spring, you know, he he's not afraid to get the ball down the field. It seemed like Brock was confident in it. There was one he rolled out. Opposite arm side and threw a great ball at Varian and Varian just didn't reel it in. But it yeah, for him to be able to move out of the pocket, I can still take those. Yeah, I thought so too. It was an incredible throw. You know what I mean? It was uh, one of those ones that he was going those left, had to turn and throw and and uh, threw a, a very good ball. And at that point, you know, again, you know, no ex excuses for Varian. It was raining and, and a little slippery, and he didn't didn't bring it in. And it was also one of those ones where. You know, it was definitely hanging in over the middle. You know, you're going to take a shot too. But, but uh, we'll we'll get the next one. Mark, I was looking at them, uh, some numbers here for Alex Rainer. You know, dating back to the beginning of the 22 season, he's made 29 of the last 32 field goals. I guess. Has he been even better than that? Are you trying to jinx him? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I know, I'm just saying. Has he been yeah. even better yeah. than what you thought when we got caught? No, he, he's a very good player. I mean, it's probably fair to say he's a little more consistent. And uh, I, I mean, I had an expectation when he came in he was a good kicker. Mm -hmm. And he's done that. Yeah. Mark, I think of the only third and short you guys had Saturday, you ran the end around the very long. How do you mm -hmm. feel about your running backs in those situations where everybody knows you got to run the ball with chip out? And that seemed like it was yeah. a I thought that was a point, you know, I made um, Saturday morning in, in uh, one of our meetings with our team that, 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 that I wanted to be able to run the ball when the whole stadium knew we were going to run the ball. And, um, you know, I think, you know, we, we got going in the run game, but we're going to continue to improve, and we need to. we got to continue to challenge them. I felt confident in our running backs with no problem, and I felt confident with our old line. We just got to get on the same page, and we got to do it. Um, I told you after the game that that that, that was my, my fault on the fourth and one. You know, one. I mean, if I, I think you all know me and watched me over the years. You know, I'm, I'm going to be calculated with that, but but pretty aggressive when, when the time's right. And depending on the opponent and the situation and the whole deal, but not that I regret it. We go up two scores. You know, you go up ten nothing. You know, I felt good about making the field goal as you pointed out with Alex being pretty steady. But uh, again, I got confused on the change with that melee going on over there. You know, fourth and one in that situation. 
uh, you know, at the moment, I'm like, guys, this is my bad. Like, I, I was confused. I didn't see the change. And, and you know, <laughs> you, you only have so much time. You don't want to get a delay a game. You know, so when I see those sticks and you're substituting 11 guys, you know, I want to get that operation going so they're not rushed and get a delay and all that. But, again, no excuses, just it, it, the situation was what it, what it so, was. Sorry. No, you're good. <coughs> South Carolina ran it twice as many times as they threw it. How does that challenge your defense, not just to be stout, but also to make sure your secondary is engaged? <clears throat> yeah, I think part of that is just like us as well, with, uh, with Sellers pulling it down some too and, and reading it and checking, you know what I mean? And, and we had some of that as well. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, I'm sure they want to be balanced, you know, but anytime you have a quarterback that's dual threat, you know, it could add, it could add a few more runs in there as well. And there, and there's reads on there. A lot of their run plays have screens and bubbles and RPOs and things of that nature that, um, you know, any quarterback, ours included as, as you keep on playing, you know what I mean? You, you, you feel more comfortable mixing it up and, and sprinkling in some of those throws. You have a guy like, like Brock who can keep things alive. Yeah, yeah. If I could go back real quick, last year we had second and two, and we had one that we could run or we could throw, and I and I, and and it, it kills me that we didn't hand it. We throw the ball backwards and lose seven yards instead of going out. Mm -hmm. Could have scored. So anyway. Still <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I don't know why that just jumped in my mind. <laughs> but go ahead, Jeff. Sorry. Yeah, when you've got a guy like Brock who can keep things alive and keep those eyes down the field, and everything, does it take some time for the other guys around him to, to learn that and adjust to, hey, we've got to stay in this? We have worked that. And again, Coach Hamden has done a, a, a tremendous job. We have worked that since spring. You know, so we work that in practice, and again, we're not perfect, and get out in games and things happen. But uh, I thought he did a nice job at directing when he had time the other day. But yes, I think you keep on, um, you know, as, as you get on the same page and keep on playing. Hopefully, that'll improve as well. Yeah, uh, with with Brock, I uh, guess. With your previous transfer quarterbacks that come in here, have all had a measure of experience starting. What was that transition different, or how different was it with Brock, and how did you kind of get him prepared for Saturday? Well, if you think about it, you know when we when we took Will, you know we hadn't thrown, you know very many. As a matter of fact, I, I don't know. You could I'm not don't quote me exactly, but I mean I, I, there's more. You could look it up. There's more. Yeah, there's a lot. I know you guys got a lot of time to look things up, <laughs> but uh, but uh, but I could argue that there was probably more film on Brock than there was Will Levis. You know of of you know seeing what we're what we were looking at. You know so, um, but. To your point, we did put a lot of faith and confidence in Brock because we believed in him. And, you know, what we did see on film we liked. Uh, okay. Again, I go back to he's coming from a program you know how well coached he was and how complex, you know, they are. You know, with you know, okay. playing Georgia, they're not just good players. They're very well coached. And so when we were taking somebody like Brock from there who was their backup. You saw his operation. You saw the way he was coached. You saw the way he played in high school. You felt pretty good about it. Did you see any signs of a Stetson or Carson in him? I don't. I don't. I can't. I can't get any comparison like that. You know what I mean? I, I just looked at him and had confidence in him. How much of the fact that he was a coach's son? A lot, definitely. Speaking as a coach's son. Yeah, def definitely had, had a lot to do with it. You know, um, you know, Greg, you know, his father has, you know, is, is a tough guy and a high school coach and, you know, definitely instilled that in Brock. And um, he's wired right. There's no doubt about that. Mark, speaking of time to look things out, I think in the last three Kentucky-South Carolina games, UK's turned the ball over eight times and South Carolina's turned it over twice. What's the key to turning that around? Well, again, I mean, you know, that's a stat that you have time to go look at. I mean, I've watched the games, and I will say, you know, starting with last week, I mean, turnover margin is big in every game, you know, especially evenly matched, you know, games. So, you know, that that's always a factor and always important to us.
I know JQ had the one interception, but specifically how did those corners opposite Max kind of play in that first game with DJ out? Yeah, DJ, we're trying to get DJ back healthy. I think uh, that could help us uh, bring some some depth. Um, you know, and we wanted to get Nasir. Nasir was about to go in and get some reps as well. And uh, I would like to have seen that. But uh, but JQ uh, did a nice job, you know. And Jansen Dunn is a guy that we could play inside a little bit nickel, but also a corner and, and is coming along. So both guys, I think, will get better as they continue to get some reps under their belt. Alex Safari really looked like he was the disruptor moving up forward, uh, playing in the linebacker spot, two tackles for loss. How has his progression really helped change the overall defensive team speed, which looked really good on Saturday? I thought those guys popped as well. You know, I thought the, the top four linebackers inside really played well. You know, d -Jack, you know, on the interception, really made that interception. He always, you know, he's a steady guy. He's played a lot for us, uh, you know, um, uh, DeMoss. Johnson always, you know, plays well. I think you see him turn it, you know, the, when the game comes on, he can turn it up another notch. He packs a big punch. Uh, with Rayner, you see him always have, he has good instincts and is very fast, very sudden. And, uh, you know, I thought Alex also showed up, you know, and there's things he could be better at. You know, it's his first time really playing in there. And again, he could play a little inside, a little outside, but he definitely showed some 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 pop or you know some some athleticism, some suddenness, and uh, I think you know he's going to get better and better. All right, folks. I'm sorry. Trayvon Brick, like he had a good game. What did you see from him in camp, and what did you? I thought Trayvon had a, a very good game. Um, you know, he's a guy that that. You know, he's played a lot of football for us. I'd like to see him take another step, and I thought this first game showed that. You know, I thought he was disruptive, you know, did his job. A lot of times those those interior defensive linemen are unsung guys. You know, nobody talks about them because they're getting – they're doing a lot of dirty work and, and cleaning things up inside there. And uh, I thought he played very well, and I thought he showed a lot of growth because Trayvon, you know, has a tendency to be, you know, he, he's an emotional guy. And, and uh, you know, there was one late hit in particular. And, you know what I mean? And or, I, don't, I, I don't think it was called. But there were some things going on after the play. And normally he would respond in a different way. And he was very frustrated by it. But, again, that's the unselfishness we're looking for. It takes a bigger, stronger man to take that penalty. Just like when we've got a gift when somebody hit us late and it would have been uh, third and one, I want to say, on the goal line, one or two. You know, those aren't give me's. You know what I mean? They have a chance to stop us. You have a chance to turn it over. And they gave us a new set of downs. And it was good by our guys not retaliating. I talked long a lot about that because early in the year, again, all the emotions. I've watched a lot of football. You see things happening all the time of just being an unselfish football team and being a smart football team and having a high IQ. We, we've got to be that way. You know, we cannot beat ourselves. And football 101, you can't beat anybody until you stop beating yourself. And uh, I try to beat that into our guys' heads. And, um, you know, it's hard in today's world to, to be extremely unselfish and, and play for everybody else. But I think we have a really good group. And I think this is a good start, you know, to build from. So, you know, again, uh, thanks for the support last week. I thought it was incredible. Uh, you know, our, our, our facilities people, did, you know, worked so many hours all day. Just to thank them and the, the fans for sticking it out and staying with us. It was truly amazing. Great atmosphere, great situation, and we need it again. I call them this week. You know, we start league play, and uh, we need this place electric, and I promise you our team's going to work hard, and uh, we'll be prepared and ready to tee it up here Saturday. So thank you.